story of the prodigal son and his father. And we're going to read it to you here, beginning in Luke chapter number uh, 15, verse number 12. But first, let's pray. Father, we do thank you, God, for this opportunity to call upon thee. Bless this message. Bless everyone that's under the sound of our voice. And God bless those that may hear uh, by the way of the Internet or, uh, or some other manner. I pray, God, that you bless the message. And God, help us, Lord, to see you, God, as the, as the great Father that you are. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your Son to die that we might have life. Help us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Verse number 12, we find the story. And the younger of them said unto his father, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his sub substance with riotous living. Now, the older son, uh, in this instance, would, or in these instances, in that day, would get the larger portion of the inheritance. And uh, the, the younger son would, would get a portion, and usually it had to do with, with uh, movable things, things that he could, uh, money, horses, uh, cattle, whatever. Uh, that was their portion. And this son, he got about age 15. That's when most teenagers know about everything, I think, when they're 15 years old. And to 16, 17, whatever age he was, he got up and, and he said, Daddy, I want my inheritance. And it was, you know, if the father wanted to give it to him, it was proper that he should ask for that. And he said, Father, I want you to give to me what I got coming to me. And so his father divided into him his portion. He gave it to him. And uh, apparently the younger son hung around a little while after that he'd gotten together his inheritance. But then he decided, I'm going to leave. I'm going out. I'm going to a far country. And I'm going to get away from everything that I've been raised to do. I've heard some of my buddies down in the big city and they tell me how fun it is and how exciting it is to live down in a big city where uh, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of partying and all these things that are going on. And so I'm going to go down there and I'm going to live in a far country. Now, this son's portion, apparently from a pretty large estate, if we read the rest of it here just a little bit, uh, his portion might have been some good amount. But it didn't take him long for him to waste his substance on riotous living. He went down there and he, you know, he, he paid for the parties. He bought the finest camel that was around. He bought the finest uh, little cart to pull behind his, his horses or whatever. He bought the finest things and he got down there and had him the finest apartment. And uh, he had a good time, but it only lasted for a short time. Friend, that's the way sin will do you and that's the way sin will do me. It might seem fun for a while, but it too will pass away. There's only pleasure in sin for a season. Remember that. If you decide in your heart that you're going to live in the far country, then just remember you'll wind up the way of the prodigal, and it won't be a pleasant return home, but one way or the other you'll come home. And friend, this sum, went, verse number 14, And we and he had spent all there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave it to him. This Jewish boy had gotten down to the place where he was feeding the pigs. One of the worst things, one of the worst jobs that he could have. And he was so hungry that he would have fed himself with the husk. And that was carob pods. It was full of sugar and protein. And some of the poorest people were the ones that would eat that. And he came to that place and he was so hungry that he would, that he would uh, fill his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. Nobody was there to help him. Now you remember, this son had everything he could possibly want. He had a good inheritance, had a good home. Uh, it talks about his father, but I'm to assume that there was a mother there somewhere, and uh, his father had servants, and I mean, he had it made, but he wanted to do it his own way. 
How many times, friend, we as Christians decide that we want to do things our own way. And where does it get us? It gets us off in a famine, away from God, away from the things of God, away from the goodness of God. And we find ourselves starving to, to death spiritually in a far country away from God. But verse number 17 tells us what happened to this prodigal. He came to himself. And I've related about my own life how there was a time when I got out of the will of God. But one day I came to myself. I got spiritually weak and I got spiritually hungry. And I got to a place where the Lord could speak to me and I would listen to Him. And I came to myself and realized what I had been missing out for the, for the couple of years that I'd missed out on the things of God. And I began to remember how good it was at church when I... When I was at the house of God, I got to remember how fun it was around church when the preacher would preach and I'd enjoy the preaching of the Word of God and I would enjoy the shouting and the singing and the praise of the Lord. And here I was in a far country starving to death for that and there was only one hope for this preacher. I see, all that time, and I've never, I've never owned up to this, but I was running from the Lord. I was running from the call to preach the Word of God because I knew as a young man that I should preach the Gospel. And I was kind of running from that call. And I thought, I'll do anything else. But God's got a way of getting you to come to yourself. This prodigal, he got him down there in a far country. And he got, and, and he got him down there where he had nothing else. And friend, you'll come to the place in your life if you're a child of God and you get out of the will of God, you'll come to that place where you remember how good it used to be at the house of God. Amen. Now... What did the father do? He came to himself and he began to think. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. He said, my, my father's servants have got better than I have. And I imagine that he imagined how that probably that morning he, they had sat down to a, a good meal of bread and eggs and milk and cheese or whatever they were eating and they, they, they thought of all of that and and uh, he said, man, the servants are eating better than I am. I'm down here feeding with pigs. But back at the father's house, things are fine. Things are well. So he said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy, thy hired servants. He determined he was going to get back right with the father. Now that's what the prodigal must do. The prodigal must get to the place where he realizes that the only way that he'll ever have any peace, joy, happiness in this life is to get right with the Father. Amen? And when you get right with the Father, then it doesn't matter what else is going on around you. All is well. So he said, well, I'm going back to the Father. If I can just get only one of his hired servants, I'll be back where I know the hired servants will be fed well, and I won't be down here in the far country working uh, for this man that I can't even get anything to eat out of. And all I'm doing is slopping pigs, which is the worst thing that a Jewish boy could do. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran on, fell on his neck and kissed him. Now, we know that the son was a way far off. That's the way we get sometimes, isn't it? If we're not careful, we'll get a little away from God and then we'll find ourselves away from God. And he was a far distance off. But guess where the father was at? He was right where he was when the son left him. That's the way it is with the believer. We may get away from God, but God doesn't go anywhere, friend. He is right where he was when we left. And I imagine as the, as the son left to go to the far country, maybe the father was standing on the porch watching his, watch his son go off into the distance to the far country. Maybe he was watching him go. Maybe he was praying, Lord, I'm afraid he's going to get in trouble. He's young. I'm afraid he's going to get down there and get in trouble. God, watch over and protect him <coughs> and bring him back safely. So all the whatever time went by, the son decided he's going home, and guess what happened? 
when he was yet a great way off, I believe Father's still standing on the porch looking. I believe every day he would get out on the porch and he would look for his son to come back home. And maybe he was thinking, well, maybe today I've heard things aren't going well for him. If he'll just come back home, I'll, I'll get him back in the family. If he'll just come back home, I'm waiting for him to come back to me. And when he comes back to me, all is well. Amen. That is the way it is with God, my friend. If we get away from God, he's waiting on us and waiting on me to come back to him, to come back to the Father. So when he saw him, he fell he, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned. What did he do? He confessed up. He came in confession of sin to the father. He said, I've done, I've sinned. And he said, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and, jo and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. The son came home. That's a good story, isn't it? But we see in this whole thing what, what makes a good father. What makes a good father? The, 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 uh, the son comes home and the Father is there to greet him. The Father is there to say to his son, Son, I'm glad that you come home. He, a good father is a loving father. A good father is a father that will love his children unconditionally. It doesn't matter how good they are or how bad they are. A good father loves his children unconditionally. My heavenly Father loves me unconditionally. My daddy, Gene Coates, loves me unconditionally. No matter how I've been in life, my daddy has always loved me. My father has always been concerned for me. My father has always prayed for me. And I have tried as a daddy to be a good father and to be concerned for my children and love them unconditionally. I've got my son sitting before me today. Have I disappointed him as a father? Probably sometimes, yes. Has he disappointed me as a son? Maybe. I don't remember it, but it might have happened. I'm proud of my son. I love him. He's a good son. And listen, I want to tell you something, friend. If he was to ever get out of the will of God and quit preaching and go off into a far country, God help him never to do that, son. Don't ever do it. Amen. Don't ever do it. But if you ever do, I still love you. Amen. With an unconditional love, I still love my children. No matter where they go, no matter what they do, love my children. Daddies, maybe, you, maybe your children are all gone out of the house, but you still got to love them with an unconditional love. They're yours. God give them to you. And if they get out of the will of God, you pray for them. You seek the face of God for them. And it comes a time where you say, Lord, I can't do anything, God. You do it, and you put them in the hands of God. Amen. And then you pray, God deal in, deal in mercy, God deal in kindness, but God deal with my children. Amen. So you love them with an unconditional love. And the Father loves us unconditionally. So it takes the unconditional love of a father. It takes the forgiveness of a father. The unconditional love and the forgiveness of a father as he raises his children. How many parents here have ever had their youngest do something that just, you know, just wasn't right? They just did wrong. Raise your hand. Raise your hand, brother. I know you. Yeah, I know everybody. Raise your hand. <laughs> now my kids never did anything wrong. I'll just tell you. I just raise my hand and show you what to do. <laughs> But you know what? No matter no matter what, my children may have ever done not listen. I've got I've got three of the greatest kids that's ever walked planet Earth, and I feel that way. But no matter what they've ever done, I've always been willing to forgive my children. Amen. Now I know I read a story about a man that he his son is is sort of like this story. His son left the father's house. And it's it it, it lines up, this is a true story. This lines up with what this prodigal did. And for, for 
something like 50 years he had never seen or heard from his son. And then by the way of a, of a church pastor, it was made known to him that this son lay dying down in the gutter, down in the, down in the ghetto, and he wanted to talk to him. So the pastor went down and he said, I'm so-and-so, my daddy's name is so-and-so, I haven't spoke to him in 50 years and I'm dying. I'd really like for my father to forgive me. And he said, what's your daddy's name? And he said, told him who his daddy was and he said, I'll, I'll try to find him. Said the pastor searched and searched in a day or two he found the father. And he went to that father and said, do you have a son named, I believe his name was Joseph, do you have a son named Joseph so-and-so? He said, I disinherited him 50 years ago when he left. And said he never wanted to come back home. He said, I, he said, I took him at his word. And he said, well, he's dying and he wants to make things right with you. And the father said, take me to him. Now you think that's horrible. You think that's a terrible thing. But the son had become as dead to him because he had no idea that he was even still alive. And so the pastor took the wealthy man that owned the lot and he took him down into the gutter and he showed him his son laying there dying on the bed and his father went to him and said, Joseph, and he said, Daddy. He said, yes, son. He said, I just want you to forgive me. He said, I know I did you wrong. I want you to forgive me before I die. And the father said, son, if I'd have known you wanted to forgive me, he said, I forgave you a long time ago if you'd have just come to me. And they were reunited and rejoined together for a short time before the son passed away. Listen, friend, God is willing with open arms to forgive his children, to forgive us if we go wrong, if we do wrong. He's waiting. See, there's one thing we can never change. When we're saved by the grace of God, we can never change who our father is. I'm saved by the grace of God. Jesus uh, is my heavenly Father. And one day, friend, I'm going to see him face to face. But I'll always be his son. And nothing I can ever do will change that. He won't disinherit me. He won't disown me because I'm his, I'm his blood kin by the blood of Jesus. So he loves me unconditionally. He's willing to forgive me when I do wrong as well as good daddies should always be willing to forgive their children when they mess up. Amen. If you're going to be a good daddy, no matter how old your children are, if they mess up, be willing to forgive them, forget it, and go on by the grace of God and pray for them. Amen. So you love them unconditionally. You forgive them when they mess up. And last of all, as a good father, you pray for your children every day. You pray for your children every day. And I try every day to pray for my children. Pray for my two daughters, my two sons. Pray for my grandchildren. Pray God would, God would help them to grow up and be servants of the Lord. It was some time back of this, and I, as, a, as, a, as a daddy and a, and a grandfather, I had to come to a place where I didn't think I'd ever come to. With my children, I prayed when they were young, and it would come a hard place when, my, when I would pray. Is I loved my children dearly, and when they would, when you know, when they were around the house, and I, I loved them. And, but it come a place where I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'd rather you take them out when they're young. I'd rather you just take them on home while they're young, before they come to the age of accountability. I'd rather you take them on home than for them to grow up and die and go to hell without God. The preacher, that's a hard prayer to pray. But guess what? God saved all of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when your youngins are right with the Lord, no matter what they're doing, where they're at, you can rejoice knowing their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You love them unconditionally. You forgive them when they do wrong. And you pray for them every day. That's all it takes, I believe, to be a good father. There's a lot of psychological stuff, you know, that you... Get down, and, and, and when you get the discipline and things like that, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from you. He shall not depart from you. Rather, I'll spoil the child. 
and say, you believe in old-fashioned discipline, it worked on me. Seems to have worked on my young one. Seems to be working on my grandkids. Yeah, I reckon I probably believe that. Amen. Friend, do you pray for your young ones? Daddies, do you love your children? Daddies, were you willing to forgive your children if they go wrong? And daddies, do you pray for your children every day? That's what it takes to be a good, to be a good father. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you'd help us, Lord. Help me as a father, that I'd be a good father. Lord, even though my children are gone, they're, they're out of the house, and they're all living their lives. And Lord, I pray, God, they'd live it to the glory of God. Lord, I pray, God, they'd serve the Lord with gladness. And Father, many here, daddies here today, have, their children are out of the house. They're gone. They have no control over their lives. But God, we can always pray for our children. If they go wrong, God, we pray that you bring them back. And Lord, that's our prayer today. And Father, we got young daddies here raising their young. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Be loving, be forgiving, and be praying for their children. God, that'll work. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. I